while ago, quite a while ago, I think I, I determined that there were two primary things I was supposed to do with my life. One of those was to teach the Word of God and to preach the Gospel. Basically to pastor this church and to do evangelism. And other than walking with Jesus Christ personally and loving my wife and my family, uh, that has been my focus. And that's one of the reasons we uh, put out a decree for this year saying it's the year of good news and I asked a lot of my friends across a lot of denominational uh, and even some theological lines if they would sign it. Many of them did. And basically it was a proclamation where we're saying to the church at large, let's set aside our minor differences and pull together to preach the gospel because that is the greatest need in America. And so that's why we just did this event that we held at the University of Phoenix Stadium. And a, and a huge partner in this was the uh, SBC, the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, they assisted us in so many ways. And I've become great friends with many SBC pastors over the years, people you know well that we have here, like Jack Graham, James McDonald, uh, James Merritt, David Jeremiah, the list goes on. And what I love about uh, SBC folks is that they have a great passion for evangelism. In fact, the SBC is the largest Protestant denomination uh, in America today. There are 15 million people that identify as Southern Baptists, and they have 45,000 churches. And so as we've partnered together, we've begun to talk about some things that we might do together that need to really be done in America today. And so this is my official announcement that Harvest is now partnering with the Southern Baptist Convention, and we're joining that family. Now, our roots are in Calvary Chapel, and that's where I came to faith and, and learned so much there. And so here's the interesting thing. We are still part of the Calvary Chapel family of churches, but we're now also a part of the SBC, the Southern Baptist Convention family of churches as well. You might call it dual citizenship. Uh, I like it. And you know, so someone might ask, well, does this mean we're no longer a Calvary Chapel? No, we are. Well, then are we, wait, are we Southern Baptists? Yeah, we're that too. Wait a second, this is like blowing my mind, okay? Am I a Calvary Chapel Southern Baptist or am I a Southern Baptist Calvary Chapel person? You're a Christian. That's what you are. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. And you know, and all of the outreaches we do, we partner with all kinds of folks across a lot of denominational lines. And in fact, I speak in their churches often in preparation as the Crusades get closer. And we continue to have fellowship with those that love the Lord, uh, fellow evangelicals that love the Word of God, and especially want to preach the gospel. Now, you might say, well, wait a second. Does this mean that I have to wear a suit and tie to church now? Yes. We're making everyone wear a suit and tie starting next Sunday under the age of four. So only the children have, no, I'm joking. Uh, I think you'll find in, in the world of uh, SBC, Southern Baptist Convention, uh, you have all kinds of styles and dress, and, and they've welcomed us with open arms. In fact, uh, just last uh, week, I was able to speak to 5,000 pastors and share some of the things that the Lord has done in our ministry and values that we hold near, dear. Now, you might be asking this question, well, will Harvest be changing as a result of this? What is going to change at Harvest now that we are also part of the SBC? I have a one-word answer. It's on the screen. What's going to change? Nothing. Nothing's going to change, okay? <laughs> our church has been around for 42 years. I started it when I was nine. <laughs> no, a uh, little older. Uh, we're an independent congregation. We'll continue fellowship with the Calvary Chapel family of churches and have fellowship also and be a part of the SBC, the Southern Baptist Convention. We're not changing our theology or our philosophy one bit. Our vision remains the same as it always has. <laughs> Let's just put it another way. Our family has grown. 
our network has grown. Uh, what I really love about SBC is they have an incredible missions program. They have incredible relief ministries. They have so many things going on now that we can tap into and be a part of and continue in our mission, which is, as our mission statement says, to know God and to make him know. Now I have one regret. And my regret is I didn't tell you first, okay? I meant to do that, but I've been speaking in all these churches and prep for Harvest America, and it got leaked. It was leaked. And I, I think I think Russia had something to do with it. <laughs> no, truth is, I leaked it myself. Uh, I was speaking in a Q&A session to some pastors, and I mentioned it, and all of a sudden, my phone's blowing up with texts, and like, what? And I, wow, it kind of went viral, and then it became a news article and a lot of websites out there, all positive articles, I'd say. And so, it would just be, wow, this is, I guess it was news to a lot of people. This is something I've been thinking about, praying about for easily seven years. So this is not a decision we made quickly. The two most influential people in my life have been Chuck Smith, uh, the founder of Calvary Chapel, and Billy Graham. From Pastor Chuck, I learned how to teach the Word of God, and from Billy Graham, I learned how to preach the Gospel. By the way, Billy Graham is Southern Baptist as well, so I think this is a great uh, thing that we're doing, now broadening our influence, hopefully, for the Kingdom of God, and working together, we can get a lot more done to bring the Gospel to America and to the world. That's our passion. <laughs> 